Here's another example of mathematical induction. It's um, there's so many things that can be proved by induction. It's a very fundamental technique of proof. Yeah, although that's not our main uh, interest in this course. Um, but I'd want to give at least one example of something you can prove that isn't just a sum formula, even though those are kind of kind of fun and a standard thing to prove. Let's prove that eight to the n minus three to the n is divisible by five for all n greater than or equal to one integers. Usually when we say n it's understood it's an integer, but okay. So let's l just lay this out as a typical example of uh, of induction. So the base case is going to be n equals 1, and we just check it. Usually that's very simple, you just have to remember to do it. Oh, that is that is equal to 5, which is definitely divisible by 5. Cool. Okay, now we assume our induction hypothesis, which is the part that feels totally circular, which is that 8 to the n minus 3 to the n equals or is divisible by 5. We're not assuming that for all integers n. We're just assuming it for some particular n. And as long as we don't leave that, as long as we kind of leave that floating, we're going to be able to use that over and over and over again in the 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 magic of induction, kind of the domino effect. Okay. So now we want to prove the n plus one version of that statement. Eight to the n plus one minus three to the n plus one is also divisible by five. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and take this thing that we want to analyze and let's try to relate it to the previous case. In the sum case, the reason that it related so well is that the sum of a huge number of terms up to the n plus first term is the sum up to the nth term just plus one more term. And so that let us collapse a huge sum into something that was much more manageable and we could do algebra with, just the sum of the old thing plus the new th plus the new one term. So the key is always with induction to try to take this new expression and relate it back to the old one. Well, let's see. That's going to be, well, it's 8 times 8 to the n minus 3 times 3 to the n. Okay, so we're getting something about that, and certainly that eight, the eight and the three, we know that somehow those can combine to be a five. But this isn't just a f some number times a to the n minus three to the n. In particular, it's uh, it's not five times eight to the n minus three to the n, which would be great if you could just factor out the eight and the three and somehow pretend they're both five. That'd be pretty cool. But we can kind of fudge this a little bit. That's 8 times 8 to the n minus, uh, let's see, how do I want to do it? Minus, um, 8 times, there we go, 8 times 3 to the n plus 8 times 3 to the n minus 3 times 3 to the n. It's a pretty clever little thing. It's what mathematicians love to do this, is add and subtract the same thing. And you don't just do it randomly. You can add and subtract the same thing if you have two terms like this, and there's two things that have changed. The 8, if you compare these two terms, the 8 changes to a 3 here, the 8 changes to a 3 here. And it can be very, very useful to say, well, what if I just change one of those things at one time? Change the 8 to a 3 in the, in the nth power, and then go the rest of the way, change that 8 to a 3. Well, how do I do that? Well, if I do 1, I subtract that off and then add it back in, then why is that useful? It's because these guys are going to group into something that where the 8 is a factor. So that's going to be 8 times 8 to the n minus 3 to the n. Okay, well, I don't know why that's useful, but let's see. Then the rest of it, the 3 to the n is a factor, and I get 8 minus 3 times 3 to the n. So this idea of, 
of taking these two th expressions and kind of putting a halfway wet resting point in the middle where you change one thing and then you change the other. That's a, a very general idea, but it's something that's often hard to see, hard to come up with yourself. But once we've got that, we've got a very nice situation. 8 minus 3, that's 5. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that out and change that to a 5. So this term is certainly divisible by 5. If I knew that this term was divisible by 5, I'd be done. And guess what? I do know that that's divisible by 5. Because 8, 8, 8 to the n minus 3 to the n, that's exactly eight times something divisible by five plus five times something divisible something that's random doesn't matter so that both terms are divisible by five and so that the whole thing is going to be something divisible by five because when I add two things that have are divisible by five the result is going to be divisible by five and so that shows so the nth case does imply the n plus first case and we know the n equals one case so this is said if suppose I know it for 157 this would show that it's true for 158 and then for 159 and then 160 well why would we know it for 157 well if we know it for n equals one we're gonna know it for all of them because that's gonna imply two then three then four so, by mathematical induction, the result is true for all integers n greater than or equal to 1, which is what we wanted to show. It never stops being true. And that's, it's not a, it's, this isn't an obvious result. I and mean, there's other ways to show it, but this is a really nice rock solid way to show it. And that it involved a little bit of cleverness, but uh, nothing incredibly weird. And in particular, it didn't involve calculating anything about 8 to the n. We didn't, the biggest number that actually really appears in here were 8 and 3. And really the only calculation we ever did that had any significance was 8 minus 3 equals 5.